Good evening, everyone. Thank you uh, for joining us at this evening. Welcome to our uh, 14th Blue Health Virtual Seminar. Uh, Blue Health Virtual Seminar is a platform that allows health professionals to discuss current management updates of different health-related topics for better patient care. This platform is brought to you by Blue Health Ethiopia, a medical consultancy company founded by medical doctors and a computer engineer. We aim to be an influential healthcare leader in creating a skilled community through easily accessible knowledge in preventive medicine. Uh, I'm going to be your host, Adam Getacho. I'm the co-founder and CTO uh, of Global Ethiopia. And uh, we are honored to have Dr. Tensai Alamayo here, here with us. Uh, Dr. Tensai is a pediatric infectious disease specialist, and he's sacrificing his time and energy uh, to present to us the uh, monkeypox and uh, monkeypox, the basic topic. Uh, this evening, and uh, he is doing uh, this lecture uh, without any payment. Uh, I think this is enough introduction. Uh, Dr. Tensai, uh, you can start. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers, the um, uh, founders of the Blue Hills Ethiopia consultancy, as well as uh, employees for the invitation extended to myself in order to uh, discuss um, an, uh, a contemporary topic to healthcare, which is uh, monkeypox, uh, an ongoing outbreak globally. So I will be discussing the basics uh, of what monkeypox is, um, its history, uh, where it is found, how it presents, how you can differentiate it with other viral infections, uh, its diagnosis, uh, the principles of management, as well as how to prevent it. Uh, so my name is Tensai and I'm a pediatric uh, infectious disease specialist at American Medical Center as well as an adjunct associate professor of pediatric ID at St. Paul's Hospital Millennium Medical College. Monkeypox is um, a viral infection, which is part of the pox virus group of microbes. So just to give you a background, pox viruses are DNA viruses. So viruses can be RNA or DNA viruses. Uh, in terms of their replication mode. And its genus is what we call orthopox virus and family poxviridae. So all members of this pox virus uh, family, uh, they are known by transmission by contact through breaks in skin or mucosa or droplets, uh, which is an airborne transmission when you are closer than one meter to the source patient. But unlike, um, I mean, unlike other more um, transmissible infections, it only uses droplets in airborne transmission. Uh, for example, COVID, tuberculosis and the like, they utilize also aerosol transmission. So for close uh, contacts as well as far away contacts, but this one is via respiratory route for close contacts and uh, and through contact, um, direct contact transmission. So there are seven pox viruses which are significant to human health. Uh, the first is uh, variola or uh, smallpox. The good thing is this disease has been eradicated in 1980, but it's one of the well-known uh, members of pox viruses. And the second one is called vaccinia. This infection occurs when a person is, uh, a completely healthy person is vaccinated with a smallpox vaccine, and it's an adverse drug reaction of the smallpox vaccine. Uh, and it only lasts for a few days. Uh, so once smallpox was eradicated and once the smallpox vaccines stopped being given, the rates of vaccinia 
that are being diagnosed globally are also very, very few. Then you have monkeypox, which is the topic of our discussion, cowpox and parapox, which are usually seen in rural areas, molluscum contagiosum, as well as yatapox, which is each, which has uh, tanapox and yaba monkey tumor viruses as its members. So these are the seven pox viruses of significance to uh, humans. So the name misleads because monkeypox is not only transmitted from monkeys, but a large um, a variety of animals uh, and also from humans. It was called monkeypox because it was first detected in monkeys in the lab. Uh, and the first case was detected in humans in 1970 in the Democratic Republic of Congo in a nine months old boy from a part of the DRC where smallpox had already been eliminated. So when investigators found in 1970 an infant with uh, a syndrome which looked like smallpox, but in an area where smallpox had already been eliminated, they investigated what this new syndrome is and reached to the conclusion that this is a new uh, unidentified monkeypox virus. So monkeypox is endemic to the tropical regions of Central and uh, West Africa. So this uh, the Central and West African monkeypox variants represent its two strains. So there is a Central African variant and the West African variant. Um, Cameroon, which has part of its territory in the Central Africa and parts of its territory in Western Africa, has both strains within its borders. So the Central African variant or monkeypox clad one is a more severe variant. It's a more fatal variant with fatality rates of 10% and it's more transmissible. The good thing is that currently uh, transmitted uh, variant is the West African variant, which causes less mortality and is less transmissible and less severe. So you can acquire monkeypox. Um, of course, now we are witnessing human to human transmission as well, but from a wide variety of animals. So uh, medical literature is aware of only half of uh, animal reservoirs, so rodents, both household as well as wild rodents, non-human primates, apes, monkeys, um, etc., can all serve as uh, animal reservoirs. So if you are bitten, scratched, or if you consume partially cooked or raw bush meat, so these are the well-known risk factors. And uh, not so often in urban areas, but in rural areas where people live near forests and which have indirect or low level exposures. So these uh, type of populations are at a higher risk than urban dwellers. So the incubation period is about one to two weeks. As I've said, contact and droplet transmission routes are frequently cited, but there are few case reports of also mother to child transmission, uh, which is labeled as congenital monkeypox when mothers acquire it late during pregnancy. So as I've already mentioned, uh, most human cases in endemic parts of Africa occur in villages where a variety of animals are uh, used uh, for food and uh, children uh, may also come into contact with monkeypox when they are playing with the uh, dead animals or the carcasses. So when we look at previous outbreaks, so following its discovery in 1970, there was one large outbreak in the mid 1990s in the DR Congo. And then the rest of the world started to take attention when, for the first time, human monkeypox was reported outside of Africa in 2003 in a cluster of cases in the United States. Starting from 2017 onwards until now, 
there is a large outbreak which originally uh, started in Nigeria, later spread to Cameroon, Central African Republic, and Congo. And it's ongoing in many parts of Central as well as um, Western Africa. But as in most cases, the media starts to notice when cases uh, occur elsewhere outside of Africa and when this current group of patients were diagnosed in Europe, from UK, Spain, and elsewhere in other EU countries, starting from May 2022, then it started to grab the attention of the world. So the current outbreak started, the current outbreak in a sense, the current outbreak in Europe started in May 2022, and cases had few intra international travel, and there are few super spreader events that have already been identified and the uh, research is continuing. So the, the pictures that you see on this slide were gay pride events, which were uh, organized in Belgium, in the Canary Islands of Spain, uh, whereby a large um, uh, proportion of people who attended these events uh, encountered uh, and later on spread monkeypox. So uh, from May onwards, uh, there has only been one days, which was reported from Nigeria. And as of today, uh, there are 59 countries which have been affected. 85% of cases have been reported from Europe and more than 5,700 cases have been confirmed by the WHO with eight African countries reporting cases. Uh, taking you back to the, uh, to the ongoing uh, outbreak in the African continent. So since even the start of 20, 2022, there have been more than 1,700 cases of monkeypox uh, reported to the Africa CDC from eight endemic as well as two non-endemic African countries. Even during the COVID pandemic, Africa has documented more than 12,000 cases with 363 days uh, of monkeypox. And the number of cases have continued to rise mm -hmm. since 2017 onwards. It's only getting focus when these cases are, are diagnosed outside of endemic countries. So the one that started in May, uh, it, it has atypical symptoms as I'm going to discuss a bit on. So most of the patients are males uh, in the fourth decade of life and mostly men having sex with uh, men uh, were diagnosed with monkeypox and almost all of them presented with rash uh, and uh, which involved the oral genital as well as perianal areas and most cases were mild due to the less virulent strain that is currently causing the outbreak so these are uh, the countries that are that have been reported to have been affected as you see a large number of cases now are being reported from western europe as well as northern america slide also from the WHO daily updates shows that the uh, more than 85% of cases are being reported from the European region. So the WHO case definition for monkeypox is when you have clinical signs and the, uh, the, the infection is confirmed by PCR. Uh, a probable case is when you have the symptoms and when you have a contact history and suspected case is a patient with uh, fever, intense headache, lymphadenopathy, uh, back pain, intense fatigue, and then followed uh, one to three days later by a progressive rush. So it's starting from the face to the extremities and then to the rest of the body. So the invasive period or the pre-skin rush period lasts five days or less. So it consists of fever, headache, and what's unique in monkeypox, compared to other pox viruses is patients have large lymphadenopathies of one to four centimeter, and especially in the inguinal area, patients have back pain, myalgia, and asthenia, which is a lack of energy. And then within one to three days after the fever disappears, then the skin rush starts, and mostly it's the face, the palms and soles, 
and third most common area affected is the oral mucosa. So this was what we knew. This was the typical monkeypox um, history prior to this current outbreak. So uh, it starts off as macules and papules, and then later on proceeds to vesicles, pustules, blisters, and then it crusts. Uh, it's not pruritic. And for example, unlike chicken pox, for example, um, all lesions that you see in a patient are at the same stage. There are stages. So there is a macular, maculopapular stage. There is a vesiculo, uh, postular stage. But all lesions are uh, at one time macules and papules, and then all of them progress to vesicles and pustules. You don't get like different stages like chickenpox, whereby you see macules, papules, vesicles, pustules, all on the same patient and rushes at different stages and it's non-proritic. Uh, in adults, you can also get involvement of the trunk uh, as well as the genitalia and in HIV infected males lesions can also occur along the beard line. So these are typical rashes, especially at the early stage. You can see on the first picture, maculopapular and slightly nodular lesions in the face, involving the palms, the soles, and later progressing to the rest of the body. In the outbreak that started from Europe and pro uh, uh, spread to other countries, uh, the presentations had atypical symptoms. So uh, as I've already told you, first there is a prodromal uh, symptom and then the rash comes. But here, the rash came first and usually was seen in the genital and perianal areas before the prodromal symptoms. And then the other symptoms, including oral lesions, dysphagia, fever, headache, fatigue, uh, came. So that's what was unique about the group of cases. So you can see there were postular lesions um, over the genitalia, over the perianal area, and then the other symptoms came. So when monkeypox causes more uh, mortality, it is predominantly due to the Central African variant, as I've already said, and one, um, literature cited that the case fatality rate was higher in children and in young children and infants as compared to adults. So the key question is, how do you differentiate monkeypox with other pox viruses? What are its differential diagnoses? The first is chickenpox, okay? So as you can see in chickenpox, the lesions are more or less aggregated centripetally or around the trunks. Chickenpox is pruritic, unlike monkeypox, and uh, it rarely occurs on palms and soles. I mean, it can occur, but it's not as frequently as uh, monkeypox. And as I've already men mentioned, in chickenpox, you can see, as you see in this person, le multi-stage lesions at the same time. You can see papules, um, uh, vesicles, you can see macules, all at in the same patient but uh, monkeypox is, uh, all lesions are at the same stage. Then you have herpes zoster, which is easier to diagnose. It follows a dermatomal distribution, but the key point here is it's painful, although symptoms are milder in children. Vaccinia is a reaction to a smallpox vaccine. So very, very, very few people get vaccinated against smallpox now, but in general, it's a short-lived rush and it's generalized. And obviously it follows a history of smallpox vaccination. Smallpox or variola, which was eradicated in 1980, is the most, um, uh, it's the syndrome with which shares the most symptoms with monkeypox. Almost monkeypox and smallpox, they, they are almost similar uh, in that they have a centrifugal uh, distribution, uh, more peripherally with palms and soles involvement, um, and also lesions at the same phase. What's different is in smallpox, there is no animal reservoir, and it has a high uh, mortality as compared to monkeypox, but thank God we don't have to deal with this diagnosis now. 
Then you have, especially in rural areas, in people who handle sheep, cattle, etc., or for parapox, you see this single uh, vesicular lesions, especially on the hands and the legs. These are due to animal contact. They are unique among pox viruses in that these are not transmitted by droplets. And usually these are solitary lesions. Uh, very similar syndrome is what we call cowpox lesions. And in cowpox lesions, lesions are more nodular. So you can differentiate this from monkeypox because these are singular lesions and um, they can be more nodular and they don't have different stages. They don't have prodromal symptoms. Then you have the Tana pox. This was first recognized in the Tana River Basin in Kenya. This is pruritic, unlike monkeypox. It's usually solitary, again, unlike monkeypox. It's associated with regional lymph node enlargement, similar to monkeypox, but among the pox viruses, this has also an oncogenic potential. Transform, it can transform to malignant uh, skin lesions. And it's restricted usually to Kenya and a few countries in the Central Africa. And molluscum contagiosum is also another commonly diagnosed pox virus. It's usually seen in immune competent children and also immune compromised people across all ages. These are very small, like one to two millimeter, and they are centrally amplicated and only popular and usually affect the head and the neck. So it's easier to differentiate from monkeypox. Uh, in, in some countries around the world where smallpox vaccination was given prior to eradication, uh, and in, especially in older people who were vaccinated against smallpox, when they present with monkeypox, the rash may have an atypical type of distribution. Uh, so diagnosis is by electron microscopy and molecular methods such as PCR. Serologic tests are not that much useful because there is cross-reaction cross with other members. So the management is mostly supportive, but there are experimental antivirals which are being studied and which have been trialed in a few patients. One of these is tecovirimat, which inhibits the function of an envelope protein, which is needed for uh, extracellular viral transmission. It's available in oral as well as intravenous route. It's approved for all people, all children, older, I mean, uh, weighing more than 13 kg and also adults. In the US, it's approved for treating smallpox, but efficacy versus monkeypox was only demonstrated in animals. New investigational drugs, include cytofovir, which is a well-known antiviral used for CMV, and its latest analog, which is brincidofir, which is an oral drug, um, and also vaccinia IVIG. These are investigational drugs. So we, we prevent uh, monkeypox uh, by taking isolation of affected people uh, and also contact and droplet precautions. Uh, for contacts as a post uh, exposure prophylaxis, you can use smallpox vaccines as well as vaccinia IVIG, so the, the IVIG of uh, the va smallpox vaccine component. And in lab workers who, work, uh, who are employed in referral laboratories, who have a higher exposure of acquiring monkeypox virus, um, such as the EPHI, then they are uh, indicated to take uh, smallpox uh, vaccinations uh, with boosters every three years. So now I will just say a few words on the smallpox vaccine because it's being, um, uh, it's, uh, so the focus is on this vaccine as uh, one method of uh, prevention in people who are exposed to monkeypox. So following elimination from the world, a few governments, including the United States, um, stockpiled uh, some uh, smallpox vaccines uh, in case if uh, an outbreak of smallpox uh, occurs and in, in order to vaccinate at-risk people but also because of concern that the smallpox virus may be used as 
an agent of bioterrorism. So they have this smallpox vaccine in their national CDC banks. So smallpox vaccines provide uh, immunity for three to five years and are effective, 95% effective uh, in uh, preventing smallpox, but they have also a cross protection against monkeypox of 85%. So the post-exposure prophylaxis, the targets are uh, ages older than one year up to adults. Uh, if you get the smallpox vaccine within three to five days after being exposed, then this will prevent or uh, lead to mild symptoms of smallpox and also because of a close relation uh, and also uh, prevents is thought to prevent monkeypox as well. So there are two vaccines, the Gynios vaccine, which is a killed vaccine, and the Atom 2000 vaccine, which is a live attenuated vaccine. In the US, these are approved uh, for adults older than 18 years of age at high risk for uh, monkeypox, okay, but not as a pre-exposure prophylaxis. Uh, it's only if you are uh, uh, exposed uh, and then uh, e their efficacy against monkeypox has been shown in non-human primates but not in human beings. Uh, the genius or the killed vaccine is lesser, has lesser adverse drug reactions compared to the ACAM 2000 which can have higher rates of side effects including a higher risk of myocarditis. So if, if we get the smallpox vaccine, uh, uh, then who should be vaccinated? Okay, so the highest risk uh, is when you have unprotected contact. Uh, if you are present during procedures that may create aerosols, respiratory as well as gastrointestinal, for example, and in ICUs, and people living during the presumed incubation period of about six to 13 days with a person with confirmed monkeypox, so this should be vaccinated, but medium risk for whom case-by-case -case decisions can be made are unmasked contacts who were within two meters for three hours of more of an unmasked patient and contact when there's contact between a person's closing as well as the patient's skin lesions. For all others, vaccines are not indicated. Smallpox has one of the highest rates of vaccine-related adverse drug reactions. So it can cause eczema, vaccinatum, it can, could, it, it can cause necrotic skin lesions at the site of the vaccination called vaccinia gangrenosa. It can cause encephalitis, myocarditis, and as I've already mentioned, generalized skin rash or vaccinia. So especially in rural areas, control measures should include having a buffer zone of cleared land between forest areas as well as cultivated land where people dwell and as much as possible moving from bushmeat consumption to animal uh, husbandry or uh, uh, farm animal consumption and also education in the handling of wildlife because all of the risks that I've just discussed um, are also observed in rural Ethiopia as well. So if you have patients and if you have uh, suspicions of contacts, uh, please call the Ethiopian Public Health Institute at 8335. Um, thank you for your attention, and I would like to leave the floor open to questions. So the first question is, uh, what, what name do you suggest in order to um, prevent discrimination against Africans? I think the WHO is also considering this and uh, they are planning to change the name, but uh, I don't have any name suggestions. And in my opinion, the name doesn't matter as long as we know the syndrome and how to prevent it. Uh, because this type of um, discrimination, whether it's overt or hidden, discrimination 
is a global phenomenon and cannot be addressed by a simple name change. And the other question is, um, what should be our first step if we have a patient suspected of monkeypox? So as I've already posted in, our, in my last slide, you should call the public health uh, authorities and um, have them confirm the case using uh, PCR. And as much as possible, try to have a contact tracing. Um, it's, it's not as transmissible as uh, COVID. Uh, for example, since uh, May, uh, end of May 2022, where the Western media picked the monkeypox diagnosis, we've, uh, so it's now been almost six weeks since we started hearing about this outbreak, and uh, there have only been 5,700 cases. If you take the same time when COVID started, okay, within six weeks, we had thousands of infection compared to this because of its uh, numerous methods of transmission through aerosol contact and droplet. This one is usually associated with droplet and contact, intimate contact. And also it has been shown to be also transmitted as uh, due to contact as a sexually transmitted diseases. So know the methods of transmission, do contact tracing, call EPHI, so that's what uh, I can answer. Is Ethiopia at risk for mon monkeypox? Definitely, definitely, because bushmeat consumption is practiced. Uh, we have, we are very much, very much uh, connected with the rest of the world, with our airlines uh, having many flights per week due to many uh, countries around the world. Um, so definitely. How do we differentiate monkeypox from chickenpox? One, monkeypox is not pruritic. Chickenpox is. Uh, monkeypox uh, pre presents more frequently with palmar and sole rash than chickenpox, which rarely involves um, palms and soles, but it can. And chickenpox are skin rashes. You can see skin rashes at different stages, whereas in monkeypox, you only see one stage in one patient at one time. Uh, so this is how you differentiate. Has EPHI started the testing and any case detection yet? So I'm not aware of any confirmed case so far. Um, Teco Virimat is not available in Ethiopia. Uh, is the vaccine only for those exposed? Yes, it's only for those exposed. Uh, you cannot use it as a pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's not approved. It's only for post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, can we say it is fatal? Yes, there, there has been one day's reported from Nigeria among the 5,700 cases which have been diagnosed so far up to today. But so it's rarely fatal because the type of monkeypox uh, is the West African variant. The, if the outbreak was due to the Central African variant, we would have seen much more fatalities. Um, currently, monkeypox is a reportable health condition. So you should report it. Uh, I am not aware if the smallpox vaccine is available in Ethiopia. I don't think so. Only few developed countries where they can store large amounts of these vaccines in the absence of smallpox um, are uh, stocking the vaccines, such as the United States, Russia, etc. Um, is quarantine recommended uh, at home or hospital? So you should practice contact as well as droplet precautions. So that means some degree of quarantining is uh, recommended uh, and avoiding, so wearing gloves, um, washing hands, and as much as possible avoiding contact uh, with direct skin to skin contact with an unaffected person and also um, wearing surgical masks. Um, so, uh, uh, do you have any current update on monkeypox prevalence in Ethiopia? So, no studies 
exists in Ethiopia uh, concerning this diagnosis, but it's being monitored. Uh, after healing, it leaves uh, uh, scarring for a few weeks. Uh, so that's one of the questions which were asked. Um, do you expect different clinical features for immune compromised patients and pediatric age groups? So children have more or less um, uh, rashes on their face, uh, extremities, and occasionally on the trunk, but adults, in addition to these areas, can also have rash on the trunk as well as genitalia. As most other diseases in immunocompromised patients, because of their inability to amount a strong Im uh, immunity, so the uh, rashes may have atypical features. So contact tracing and history will be very important. Um, so uh, the other questions I've already answered. After resolution of symptoms, how long does it take for the skin lesions to heal? Uh, weeks, okay, in weeks. Um, so droplet and aerosol transmissions are different because in aerosol transmission, you can have airborne transmission with, a, with someone close to you, as well as someone far from you within the same room. But droplet uh, transmission is, you can only transmit it uh, uh, via the airborne route if the contact person is one meter or closer to you. So that's the main uh, difference. Uh, so in immune compromised patients, the symptoms are more severe. So uh, washing hands, okay? Washing hands with water and soap, uh, as well as sanitizers, applying sanitizers are very good uh, uh, preventive tools. Why is it associated to homosexuals? I mean, the current group of cases were um, attributed to uh, gay pride events, homosexual, where a large number of homosexual uh, men aggregated for uh, festivals. And as I've already said, the infection is transmitted via contact as well as droplet route. So um, uh, sexual intercourse is a contact. Uh, so it provides a contact route of transmission for uh, monkeypox. So that's how, um, uh, that's why a large number of men having sex with men uh, acquired the infection. So, yeah. So the other, I have already discussed the main differential uh, diagnosis. Genital warts has a different uh, visual appearance than monkeypox. As the name indicates, it's more in the genital area, whereas uh, monkeypox predominantly affects face and extremities, but can also affect others. What is the possible cause of this? Uh, Superinfection, uh, sepsis, uh, mucositis, these are possible causes of this. So contact precautions should be uh, made. Uh, so if uh, a patient has severe sepsis due to superinfection of lesions, then multi-organ failures are possible, yes. Uh, it's, all, it's transmitted via droplet and contact. So surgical masks and gloves are uh, important for preventing transmission, but you don't have to use N95s. So those are more for infections which use aerosol transmission. Uh, the common complications of monkeypox, usually most cases do not have uh, complications and patient is, the, the illness resolves within um, two to three weeks. So the next question is, is it possible to get monkeypox from domesticated animals or pets through some contact with ani wild animals? Yes. So wild animals can transmit to uh, domestic animals, and then you, uh, humans can acquire it accordingly. So um, I'm pretty much answered yes. all questions. Yes, thank you. I think uh, it's enough questions since we're already running low on time. So, but uh, before uh, you, uh, we let you go, 
Doctor, if you have any last words regarding uh, the topic and uh, the, uh, what seems to be uh, uh, somehow spreading virus in, our, uh, in, in some countries. So if you have any last uh, words or last regards you want to mention. So my, uh, my last message is, of course, knowing uh, how it presents and how to, uh, how to prevent it is very important. But when you are faced with vesiculobulous rash, um, think of the common differentials. Okay, so I am seeing a lot of uh, quick diagnoses. Uh, so for any patient presenting with the vesiculobular rash, everybody panics and says uh, monkeypox, but there are more common differential diagnoses such as chickenpox, um, uh, molluscum, and parapox, or especially in, in uh, people living in the rural areas. So. Um, we should always ask ourselves, is this really monkeypox? And are we, am I dealing with a common differential diagnosis? Because as you know, in outbreaks, there is a stigma associated with the first few cases. And if by chance, anyone in the audience is the first person to uh, encounter the first case of monkeypox, you have to be sensitive to um, what the diagnosis uh, implies to the patient as well as to the family. Uh, as we have witnessed during the COVID uh, pandemic. So think of common differential diagnosis, but still be aware of all the clinical features of monkeypox, who to contact, how to contact, how to communicate with patients and family. That's my last word. Thank you.